This episode of Fastlane is part two of an epic trip the band took in the fall of 2021 and picks up after our show in Nashville to the MMOPA convention. Leaving Nashville, we traveled to Denver, skirting storms along the way for an epic Oktoberfest show at Beaver Creek in God's Country. The return back to the East Coast was challenged by some fuel issues related to some unforecast winds aloft and ATC issues. See how we dealt with both on the latest Life in the Fast Lane. I'm John Weiswasser, pilot and drummer for Eagle Mania. Follow me as I explore the practical use of general aviation while I travel the country with the world's greatest tribute to the Eagles. This is Life in the Fast Lane. This leg of the trip, the flight from Smyrna, Tennessee to Denver, Colorado, encompassed over 900 miles total, which is generally in the range of the meridian. But given the headwinds aloft flying west, I definitely needed to make a fuel stop. I selected Hayes, Kansas because they had good runways and approaches and relatively cheap fuel. It was more than halfway, but that was better because the fuel was cheaper at Hayes than in Denver and, more importantly, it played nicely into my weather avoidance strategy. The prog charge showed that I would be crossing a frontal system associated with a low pressure area and that I could expect showers and storms which intensified as the day progressed. So. I planned for an 8 a.m. departure, much to Frank's chagrin, and at the time, Smyrna was VFR, my fuel stop, Hayes, was marginal VFR, and Denver was VFR. The forecast was for Smyrna to stay VFR all day, Hayes to improve to 2,000 overcast at the time of my arrival, about 11 a.m., and Denver executive to stay VFR all day with light winds. As far as icing goes, I avoid flying in cumulus clouds above 12,000 feet, in part because of icing and in part because of turbulence. The plan was to see and avoid and ask for deviations around buildups. That said, most of the icing was forecast to occur at about 17,000 feet and above. The same was true for the turbulence forecast. If I stayed out of the buildups, it should be a smooth ride. The graphical tab showed me what the options were if plan A just didn't work. Basically, the more I stayed to the south, the more likely I would be to avoid the weather. It meant that I had to keep in mind potential alternative fuel stops in Texas or Oklahoma. Pyreps at 7 a.m. when I briefed this were pretty much non-existent. The extended convection forecast, as usual, was so much less informative than the graphical thunderstorm forecast. I may just start omitting these from the briefings because it's just so useless. And am I missing something here? Let me know if, if I am. The graphical thunderstorm forecast showed just how the line and the potential for storms is going to progress over the course of the day. There were already convective sigmets for areas north of and along my route. Here's the next rad shortly before I left. You could see that the bulk of it was to the north of my route, headed northeast. The tail of it offered some opportunities to pick through and get around, especially to the south, but there was nothing on this that seemed prohibitive to me. Again, the plan B would be to avoid it altogether and opt for a fuel stop in Texas, which would just add time to the trip, but would allow us to get to Denver without an issue. So I committed to going. One of the nice things about flying in the middle of the country is that routing is so much more flexible. So I added a waypoint, Pioneer VOR, Papa Echo Romeo, to the end of my four-flight expected routing that would work a deviation around the weather into my flight plan already. I could watch the situation, and along the leg before Pioneer, I could ask for direct haze when and if the opportunity presented itself. Here's our own factory Clementine 5000. Here's our route. Shit. It's not so bad. No, but like We're just funny. skirting the bottom yeah. of it. And then here's what I want to do. Gone. I want to come around this bottom and go through that little hole there. Assuming that and it's still factor, turn right well, there, well, there when we get there. there. Yeah, maybe it'll right be that hole. Right but right something right. in there we'll we'll, tr we'll we got to go through that. And the Fine. key is going to be laying our descent like letting them, yeah, you know, see, making sure, see if they'll let us delay our descent until we're on the other side of that. Right. Well, that's that's the key. That that we'll be there. What two hours from now, right? But this little bit right there. Yeah, yeah we'll be there. That'll be gone by the time. Nine right, Delta Alpha, turn right, heading two nine or zero. Two nine or zero, nine Delta Alpha. It's funny. We have a lot of bailout options. There's airports here, there's airports on this side. We could just stop. 
you know, we could stop refuel and come around like to Amarillo, Texas and come and go like a, we could stop here and then go this way and then to Denver. That's another possibility. Right. The other thing is all this entire system is fluid. It could, there could be more that as we go through the day and, and the ground heats up. That's right. There, there could be more that pop up. One, one right. So at the, at the one end one of that, thousand. it's, it's, it's all associated with a um, cold front that's draped right, right along here. Right. And as the day goes on, it's going to intensify, but there's this sweet spot this morning um, over the next few hours where it's sort of dissipating before it starts, before the heating inten intensifies it. This is actually the leading edge of a high pressure system that's here, right? That's, that's right. right. Yeah. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. Right. There's a little low, but there's a high pressure up here. Right. And it's, it's pushing through. Yeah. And that, and that clockwise circulation and, and then the counterclockwise the circulation and, and the combination uh, of those warm air, cold air is causing this. Causing tornadoes. <laughs> 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 All these Probably little X's, buses are, um, are 11, 18 to 17, uh, like three strikes, that's right. So we're at uh, 30,000 and uh, about halfway. I think we should go direct here again. That'll get us right around that and then Closer, we'll ask direct destination. Center 99 Delta Alpha request. Go ahead. Yeah, I wonder if we could go direct to uh, Pioneer uh, for 9 Delta Alpha. Center 9 Delta Alpha, clear to Pioneer, rest route unchanged. Okay, direct Pioneer, thank you, 9 Delta. That brings us a little farther south. And also, keeps us away from this, it won't be as bumpy. Yep. While this is yellow, the tops, I can see it straight ahead is that cell right here, the little bit of red in it. So we can either go south of it and around, or uh, just to the right, it's pretty clear. It looks like we can just stay above it all. So I'm going to ask for direct destination. Kansas City Center, uh, good afternoon, we're to 9 Delta Alpha, flight level 300. Uh, we'd like to go direct destination if possible. 929 Delta Alpha, Kansas City Center, welcome. I have the request, stand by. It shouldn't be hard to tell. But he's got to give it to us soon. Yes. Nine Delta Alpha, clear to Hayes Airport. Right, direct Hayes. Thank you, Nine Delta Alpha. Air Shuttle 5923, contact Center 127.8. Good day. These clouds straight ahead. I think we're going to top them. And thank God we have yeah, RVSF. 1418, flight level 350. Uh, yeah, 1418, that will enable us to do that. But even if we don't, they're not towering cumulus, so I would expect ice in them and a little turbulence, but uh, but nothing terrible. Not like extensive vertical development stuff. It's not even bumping. Two Delta Charlie contact. We were right. One two six point six. Good day. Not even bumping. Twenty six six. Good day to John. Oh, we're pretty much over it now. Done. They started wanting to descend us well, soon. I think we're we can extend that in about another. Yeah. Yeah, maybe 20 miles. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So the weather there is 030 at 8, clear. Yeah, it was 5393, right, so Kansas City Center, 133.2. We want to lose uh, 27,000 feet. 1,000 feet per minute means that we should start our descent yeah, was 39, in, uh, in about two or three minutes. Math is so simple, even I can figure it out. Yeah, but at this altitude, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Do math in the cockpit. Center uh, 99 Delta Alpha. I wonder if we could start down and uh, go direct to Netty for the uh, RNA, uh, the ILS before it uh, haze. Never run under Delta Alpha. Just set of 18. Flight level 240. Flight level 2409 Delta Alpha. Never run under Delta Alpha. Correct, Netty. Thank you, direct Netty. I Delta Alpha. All right. Uh, we don't need that, so we'll go here. Kansas City Center, good afternoon, Brady 929 Delta Alpha, flight level 288, descending flight level 240, and we're direct at Netty uh, for the uh, ILS-34 at Hayes. 929 Delta Alpha, Kansas City Center, roger, descend. And uh, descend out of level 230, then pilot discretion, maintain 8000, Hayes altimeter 3007. Okay, uh, P, uh, 230, then PD to uh, 8000 and uh, 3007, 9 Delta Alpha. Over 99 Delta Alpha, descent to maintain 3800, Hayes is 1 o'clock, 1 3 miles. 
2800 looking for the airport, and uh, we'll just follow the uh, ILS in, but uh, we'll take the visual for 9 Delta. That's good. The 9 Delta has the field. 9 Delta Office, the visual approach, Hayes Airport, reports cancellation on this frequency, change advisory approved. Okay, uh, we'll, uh, we'll give you a call when we're on the ground, 9 Delta. Actually, we'll, uh, we'll give you, we can cancel now for 9 Delta. And the other cancellation, see you, squawk well, CFR, see you. See you, 9 Delta. And uh, Hazy hey, Uncom, ready at 929 Delta Alpha, is about uh, three miles out, straight in 32 on the ILS. Hazy. Hey. All right, manual, manual, lights, flaps, we can go our last notch, three green, and our zero. Minimums, minimums. I think we'll continue. Three green. How about that? <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. Looking awesome. In the middle of the plains, just as the terrain begins its long march up to the Rockies, lies Hayes, Kansas. I've used them before for quick turn fuel, and they had us fueled and turned around in about 40 minutes. Highly recommended. So we're at 175 degrees. So I'm going to motor the engine down. Uh, 140 degrees. As I edit this a year and a half later, this is a technique I don't use anymore. Do that. I'm uh, just running the starter. I'm running the starter right now. 145. Now we're at 140. Now I can add gas. The purpose of doing this is to get the hot section of the engine cool enough so that with the introduction of fuel, it does not get super hot and exceed the recommended parameters. But heat is not additive. In other words, 20 degrees plus 20 degrees doesn't equal 40 degrees. And so jet fuel burns at the same temperature, so there's no need to do this in my opinion. And the reality is that the ITT will peak at the same number no matter when you add the fuel. All right, now I'll put the generator on. Air conditioning going. All right, good. You have to take similar precautions when it's really cold? Or not? Um, yeah, well, well, when it's really cold, the problem is the battery has trouble oh, yeah, right. starting, so then I use external power. Hey, Unicom, Radio 929 Delta, Delta Alpha is uh, departing runway 34 to the west at uh, Hayes. Okay, hey, good. Power set. Airspeed's alive. Gauges in the green. 60 knots. Cross check, 85. There we go, 85. There's coming up. I'm gonna punch through this little hole right here. Kansas City Center, uh, Meridian 929 Delta Alpha. Center 929 Delta Alpha, Kansas City Center, are you in the air on the ground? Uh, we're just in the air about uh, seven miles west of uh, Hayes on route uh, direct to Rocky Mountain and Executive. Uh, uh, 5,600 climbing, 16,000 would like to pick up my IFR clearance. And we're another two, nine Delta Alpha, squawk 1152. 1152, 9 Delta Alpha. And we're another two, nine Delta Alpha, radar contact, seven miles northwest, Hayes Airport, say I'll see Position checks for 6,400 climbing, 16,000, 9 Delta Alpha. Never another 200 Delta Alpha, Roger. Cleared to Bravo Julian Charlie Airport, be direct. Call maintain follow 220. Okay, cleared to uh, Bravo Julian Charlie, direct uh, 2209 Delta Alpha. Some little build ups on the. Uh, is that the leeward side, right, of the mountains? Is this side? Yes. Leeward side of the leeward mountains. Side. Yeah. It would be a little bumpy getting in there, but that's all. Pyrep from a going somewhere or other uh, 24 minutes ago at 15,000 feet moderate turbulence. I can see buildups already. We're going to have to st be stupid around. It's all this haze, this smoke. Yeah, I guess the, the fires are yeah. raging we're crazy, right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Denver approach Meridian 929 Delta Alpha is 11,500 descending 10,000 direct with uniform. 
Ridden uh, Niner 2, Niner Delta, Alpha, Denver, approach, Roger. So we've just been given a vector, the runway 12 left at Rocky Mount. So I put in visual. It'll be like this for the next 20 minutes, Frank. You all right back there? I'm fine. All right, cool. Approach, uh, good afternoon, we're 929, Delta Alpha is 9000, uniform, uh, heading in 320. 929 Delta Alpha, Denver Pro Treasure, Alpha Timbers, uh, 3015. 15, Delta Alpha. Wait till you see how much runway we eat up landing. Hi. So, if we're sea level, right, then our true airspeed and our indicated airspeed would be the same. As you climb, right, your indicated airspeed stays the same, but your true airspeed goes up. Course. Departure Centurion yeah. 474. Oh, 6,000 feet. Uh, like our true airspeed is going to be 10 knots, thousand. 15 knots higher yeah. than Seven kilo what it ordinarily would be. It's obviously a little more complicated than I that, that, but for the layperson, I thought this so was a good quick turn summary. Final ladder above 7,500 cleared visual approach. We're only once you left. Okay, final ladder above uh, 7,500 cleared for the visual 9 Delta. Ready 9 Delta out. Delete altitude restriction number one, runway 12 left for the land. Okay, delete the restriction, clear to land, one, two, left, nine, delta. Fast track 25, Metro Tower. Fast track 25 is inbound, it's uniform, uh, we're about 10 miles to the uh, southeast. Fast track 25, roger, enter the right downwind, runway one, two, right. Enter the right downwind for one, two, right, fast track 25. Hey, okay, manual, manual, lights, flaps, three green, and uh, pretty much zero. What do you think the biggest mistake I can make doing this right now is? We can guess. Airspeed too low. Oh. Turn nine delta alpha. When able to turn direction, the number is one too left. We'll do nine delta. Nine delta alpha. Stay delta behind your left wing about a mile. You'll see him radiant at 72. And on, right land on the wrong up. runway. Six eight delta. Move oh, to yeah. follow. Change turn eight. One two left. Yeah. One two left. Clear to land. So he's got someone going to one two right. Change to one two left. Clear to land. Maneuver to follow the radiant. Uh, and I'm on one two left. 500. Still fast. Find room, room, it's just a two mile final for the parallel. Uh, don't have the 6-8 Delta, Skywagon off the base for the parallel. 6-8 Delta, look. Nine Delta Alpha, any left turn, ground point seven. Okay, left on Alpha 5, over to ground 9 Delta Alpha. You can't hide your lion eyes. It's not often that we get asked to play a date west of the Mississippi. That we had already made the trip halfway with our show in Nashville made it much easier, but we were still on a tight schedule. The logistics of this entire trip from the band perspective were complicated, and they included renting the back line, like my drums, rather than trailering them all the way out to Colorado and this back for one show. This guy here is the man. <laughs> because he put together my kit exactly the wow. way it is with my real kit. This kit is not my real kit. And it is the <laughs> symbol heights. Everything is exactly the same. The setting for this show was the tail end of Beaver Creek's annual Autumn Oktoberfest, oddly in September, which promised a large, boisterous crowd at the end of a long day of bratwurst and a ton of beer. You know, we play a lot of places, and um, sometimes you go into a place and it's really pretty, and there's a lot of little shops, and it's quaint, and it's this, and it's that. And sometimes you walk right into a coffee table book of, like, the beauty of America. This is pretty much it. This is the center for it. This is when you open the book up and boom, like this vista of, of mountains and I mean the scenery itself is beautiful. And in this particular place in Beaver Creek, they've managed to wedge this mashup of like German, Swiss ski architecture and you know 1970s American sensibility. It, it's it's just beautiful. It's just awesome. Frankie. Thank you. Are we gonna have to like change your underwear when Probably. we get up there? <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. I hate heights. My, me too. Look up towards the sky. But this isn't bad. This isn't bad. Come on. 
I usually feel, Frankie, I usually feel like somebody behind me pushing me. Yeah, me too. So shut up, will you? Yeah. <laughs> As someone who has skied many times out west, it was interesting to see the mountain without snow. It's, it's one of these where several times during the day I'm going to be pinching myself and not believing that we're actually here doing this. What do you think? It's pretty beautiful. Breathtaking. Yeah. Right? <laughs> How cool is that? It's really cool. Right. This, <laughs> it's really cool. The, the arms of Eagle Mania get longer and longer. <laughs> right? Our reach expands into the world. <laughs> For the return the next morning, I knew I could count on westerly tailwinds aloft to make for this 1,400 nautical mile trip utilizing one fuel stop. Gary, Indiana has always been a go-to spot for me. B. Coleman is a fantastic FBO and they truly have the cheapest fuel around, especially given that they buy it from a refinery that's literally five miles away. It also front loads the trip so that the shorter distance would be the return into Caldwell, where the weather was a little more iffy and therefore the fuel reserves more critical. The overall picture was typical of September. Lots of scattered high pressure with some weather at the interfaces. The only potential for weather in flight was going to be the precip associated with a cold front that was forecast to push offshore in the northeast well before our arrival. At 5.30 in the morning when I briefed the flight, Denver Executive was clear in 10. My planned fuel stop of Gary, Indiana was reporting similarly good weather and Caldwell was 608. The forecast in Denver was to remain VFR all day Gary was forecasted to stay VFR as well, and the forecast for the New York area was to improve over the morning to VFR with moderately gusty winds. As far as icing, it was a clear shot all day with very little to be concerned about. The turbulence forecast called for some moderate turbulence over the Alleghenies, but I know from experience that New York Center will have started to descend me by that point. The ECF-TCF was, as always, unhelpful. Next rad that morning showed the precip associated with that frontal system moving off to the east and a small batch of weather over western New York that I just needed to keep an eye on over the course of the day. Pyreps that morning were for light to moderate turbulence over eastern Ohio and West Virginia, and a review of NOTAM showed nothing of real interest. So I went ahead and filed a Gary for a 10 a.m. departure, my first and only fuel stop. Four flight calculated a three and a half hour flight and a 916 pound fuel burn, which had me landing at Gary with 224 pounds of fuel or 45 minutes of time in the tanks. I was comfortable with this given that the forecasted weather was to be VFR all day and there were good fuel stops on the way in case I decided on something closer. It was all going to depend on the degree of tailwind that we encountered. The 15 knots that Four flight was predicting seemed pretty anemic. Number 929 Delta Alpha, VFR traffic 12 o'clock, two miles, maneuvering 7,400. Uh, negative contact, look at 9 Delta Alpha. 9 Delta Alpha, turn right heading 010. 010, zero, zero. Zero, zero, 9 Delta Alpha. Traffic, 12 o'clock, low, one mile. You got him. 929 Delta Alpha, your VFR traffic 12 o'clock, one mile, 7,300 appears eastbound. Yeah, in sight, 9 Delta Alpha. 9 Delta Alpha, roger, additional traffic 12 o'clock, nine miles, maneuvering 8,000. Okay, we don't have that, but uh, we have the one mile traffic, 9 Delta Alpha. 9 Delta Alpha, contact approach 127.05. Let them know you have the 7300 footer and looking for the 8000 footer. We'll go 9 Delta Alpha, 2705, so long. Charlie Fox, Trot. Roger. Approach, uh, good morning, we're doing 929 Delta Alpha, 8000, signed at uh, one mile traffic in sight, looking for nine mile traffic. November 299 Delta Alpha, or 929 Delta Alpha, never approach, number 3018. 189 Delta Alpha. Number 9 Delta Alpha, the traffic's now 1 o'clock and uh, 1 mile north down 8,000 indicated. Still looking at 9 Delta Alpha. Number 9 Delta Alpha, turn left heading 350. 350, 9 Delta Alpha. Traffic, 1 o'clock, same altitude, 2 miles. Got him? Yeah, right there. At 9 Delta Alpha with that traffic. Number 9 Delta Alpha, Roger. Number 9 Delta Alpha, could you accept a 040 heading with, with the traffic right now? Uh, affirmative, 9 Delta Alpha. 09 Delta Alpha, Roger, plotting 040. 040, 9 Delta Alpha. I see him. 0409 Delta Alpha, 
Yeah. November 9, Delta Alpha, climb and maintain 9 or 1,000. 9,000, 9, Delta Alpha. Due to the way this is edited, you can't really get a sense for how long they kept us low. I started getting concerned about how the increased fuel burn was eating into my reserves, and there's about a 60 pound per hour difference in fuel consumption between flight level 290 and 9,000 feet, and we were already pushing it fuel-wise. All we need is higher. Yeah, exactly. Because we're, we're on the margin with our fuel burn. Denver approach ready in 929, Delta Alpha 9,000, direct Eon. Ready 929, Delta Alpha, Denver departure, Roger, will get higher here in about five miles. Roger that, thank you, 9 Delta. Your 929 Delta Alpha, climbing to 13,000. 13,000, 9 Delta Alpha. Your 929 Delta Alpha, climbing to flight level 230 and connect over center 133.9 or 5. One, uh, 23, flight level 230, 133.9 or 5, 9 Delta Alpha, so long. Good day. Denver Center, uh, good morning, emerging at 929 Delta Alpha, it's 13,800, climbing flight level 230, direct EON. Delta Alpha, Roger. Climb, maintain, level two, nine zero. Flight level 290. Flight level 290, thank you, 9 Delta Alpha. At this point, we had already been in the air for well over an hour. All right. Higher, higher, higher. Jetlink 7887, maintain, follow 360. 360, Jetlink 7887. That's good. We'll see Denver again for 305, 305. Yeah, watching. I want to see that be a positive number at some point. Uh, right. <laughs> Ken's referring to the fuel over destination or FOD number, which on a long flight like this often displays a negative number in the climb. This was the number that was going to determine whether we made our planned fuel stop in Gary or whether we were going to have to divert. Delta Alpha, flight level 241, climbing flight level 290. Delta Alpha, Denver Center, Roger. So no weather on this trip. The big thing is uh, fuel fuel management. My flight plan for uh, to land with 200, 200 pounds because the weather there is perfect. So I, I you know if it was the weather was worse than perfect, then I would I wouldn't have picked that airport and I would have gone somewhere a little closer. I would land a little extra fuel. It's right now in the climb is showing. Minus 140 pounds, but I expect that because we're only getting 199 through. Whereas when we level off at our target altitude, it should be somewhere in the neighborhood of 260 or 70 knots. True. There's only nine knots of tailwind at at this altitude going eastbound, which is uh, kind of unusual. All right, we're going to give this another hour. Maybe the other thing to consider is we're going to Chicago. They're not going to just let us sail in at, oh. from 29,000 feet. Oh. They're going to they're going to descend us early, and that's going to chew up more more fuel. Along, if that's above 200, I'm okay. But 170 is too low. Big deal. Just find another place for gas. That's easy. Yeah. Oh, we're uh, descending at a flight level 230 for 17,000. And uh, hopefully uh, the burn at that altitude will not be so bad that we can't get to Gary. Our bailout again is still Aurora. Aurora, Illinois was directly along our overall route, lies about 40 miles west of Gary in the outskirts of Chicago's airspace and has good services and cheap gas. Now we're at 17,000, and we're having a, we have fuel over destination, fuel at destination of 210 pounds with a 26 knot tailwind. So, here's the deal. Stop with 1379, contact Chicago Center, 1 Aurora is here. Oh, at Herwick, we commit one way or the other. Sounds totally reasonable. Unfortunately, by the time we arrived at the waypoint, it was showing less than 200 pounds of fuel at Gary, so I pulled the trigger. Chicago Center, uh, Bernie, 99 Delta Alpha request. 90 Delta Alpha, go ahead. 9 Delta Alpha, I'd like to uh, amend our destination to Aurora, Illinois for uh, fuel management purposes. Sir, 90 Delta Alpha, Roger. For now, flight heading of a 040 B vectors towards Aurora. 040, thank you, 9 Delta Alpha. 59029 Delta Alpha, Aurora Tower, left base, runway 33, runway 33, you are clear to land, 13604. 
Okay, left base for 3 3, clear to land, 9 Delta Alpha. It's worth mentioning that we landed with 255 pounds of fuel, a perfectly respectable amount on a VFR day. In the interest of brevity, I'm not going to linger on this fuel stop to show you the FBO or the fuel truck. To be completely honest, I was more interested in getting home at this point and so didn't haul out my camera to start shooting a lot of B-roll. After our quick term fuel stop, I filed a Caldwell from Aurora and we were off. Ready in 9 Delta Alpha, contact Chicago departure, have a safe flight. Okay, over to departure, thanks for your help, 9 Delta Alpha. Approach, uh, good afternoon, everybody, 929 Delta Alpha, 2000, climbing 3000, and uh, 090 zero. 929 zero. Delta Alpha, Chicago departure, radar contact, climbing team 5000. 5000, 9 Delta Alpha. Oh, they've just cleared us. Uh, up to flight level 230, we're still over Chicago's airspace, so that's pretty unusual. It's view of the city. Chicago Center, ready in 99 Delta Alpha, flight level 203, climbing flight level 230, uh, direct Lukey. Number 902 Delta Alpha, Chicago Center, how you shortly? Thank you, 9 Delta Alpha. So we're at uh, flight level 290. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, the only potential issue is flight. It's a little area uh, convection just making its way eastward. Southwest 1729, uh, but climbing we'll be south flight of level 330. At this rate, at 300 knots ground speed, we got on the ground an hour and a half, but we know that that's going to happen because they're going to descend us way early. And, as predicted, they started me down about 240 miles out. Ready 929 or Delta Alpha, Cleveland Center, Roger. Descend and maintain of flight level 230. Flight level 2309, Delta Alpha. So as we come down, right, so out of uh, even. Well, flight level 290, we had a New nice 340 knot tailwind. 4.8 in about um, one zero, 10 minutes. We, uh, we got the routing that we wanted. And that area of buildup, one three four point thirty four, basically eight, completely and that's gone. Not ten minutes. Uh, and all that's left is a little bit of a, a gusty wind at uh, Caldwell, which will favor the shorter runway. Nine Delta Alpha, descend and maintain uh, five thousand. Five thousand, great. Nine Delta Alpha. Uh, localizer runway 22. Okay, uh, 110. We can take the visual at Caldwell if that's easier for 9 Delta Alpha. Okay, you can go direct call wall and expect the visual approach November 9 Delta Alpha. Great, we'll go direct call wall. Thank you, 9 Delta Alpha. 9 Delta Alpha, your uh, radar service terminates. Then your code, you can contact Caldwell Tower, 119.8. Have a nice day. Okay, over to Tower. You have a good one, 9 Delta Alpha. Thanks. Six Echo Bravo. This call Tower, ready at 929 Delta Alpha is with your visual 28. Ready at 929 Delta Alpha, called Will Tarringer, right downwind, runway 28. Right downwind 289 Delta Alpha. Ready at 9 Delta Alpha, number 2, following serious traffic, right base to final, wind 290 at 13, gust 21, runway 28, clear to land. Number 2 for 28, clear to land, 9 Delta Alpha. Okay, manual, manual, lights, flaps, two more notches to go. We got three green, zero on pressurization. One of my least favorite runways to land on. Papa Tango, sure. cross to channel uh, number I know, five. I know like a little postage stamp at the end of a mountain, you know? Oh. 500. Three green. Call tower evening helicopter 777 Zulu Alpha 7 to the uh, yeah east inbound with Papa. Helicopter 777 Zulu Alpha call will tower continue inbound for a mile out. For a mile out continue inbound for the Alpha. All right, Delta Alpha is Charlie T's. Guardian 9 Delta Alpha turn left. 
Bravo, taxi the ramp straight ahead via Bravo to me, cross runway 22. Okay, uh, Bravo uh, to the ramp with you, cross 229 Delta Alpha. Great landing.